As you know, Ime Udoka has been suspended for the upcoming season for breaking team rules. For privacy reasons, I won't be able to offer many additional facts or circumstances around what occurred and why the suspension uh, is in place. As soon as we learned there was a potential situation, we immediately brought in a respected law firm to conduct a thorough investigation uh, and impartial investigation. And they took some time. And we actually concluded that investigation with a report uh, two days ago. The suspension is for a season through June 30th. And uh, we will make a determination at a later time uh, about Ime's future uh, with us. And uh, that will be discussed another time and has not been decided. No one else in the organization besides Ime Udoka is facing any penalty or reprimand, or even including the, the, the woman involved, or is that just private? It, 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 it probably, thank you, Gary, for asking. It probably, I was probably going to refer to the notes on that one and say it's private, but no, nobody else is facing penalty or reprimand. Last night, prior to the press conference, Udoka told me in a statement, quote, I want to apologize to our fans, players, and the entire Celtics organization and my family for letting them down, Udoka said. I am sorry for putting the team in this difficult situation, and I accept the team's decision out of respect for everyone involved. I will have no further comment. And as you can see, we have a panel here to cover every angle of this story and the press conference. I'm joined by senior NBA insider Adrian Wojnarowski, senior writer Zach Lowe, and our analyst Chinea Agumake. Thank you all for being here. Woj, I wanted to start with you here. What stood out to you as we heard from the Celtics brass for the first time? Well, listen, obviously the seriousness with which they took uh, the violation that occurred uh, in Boston, the fact that they were willing to suspend a coach uh, with no certain return date, if, if ever, who got them within two games of an NBA championship in the middle of what they thought would be, and still hope can be, a championship window. And certainly, I think you saw the gravity, I think Brad Stevens wore it, of the impact that this entire episode has had on that organization uh, specifically women in that organization uh, beyond just a, a, a particular woman who uh, had a uh, relationship with Ime Adoka. And so, listen, I think this has been jarring for the Celtics. It's certainly jarring for those involved. Mm. I think it has been jarring uh, for, for people all around the NBA. Zach? Uh, it's, it's been shocking. It's, it's in a lot of ways was more shocking than the Robert Sarver story that shocked all of us for a year. What struck me the most was I've never seen Brad Stevens look like that before. Brad Stevens is distraught. Mm. He's shaken up. And I, it, it evinced to me, you know, this was his hire. This was the guy he tabbed to coach the team. And it, it looked almost like he felt a sense of betrayal. And look, this whole story has been incredibly uncomfortable because at, at its base, it is a human story with yeah. families that are going to be wrecked. There has been a rush just across the board, a rush to identify the woman, which was frankly disgusting a rush to evaluate the severity or lack of severity or whatever you feel about the suspension, a rush in some corners to defend Ime Udoka without really knowing all of the facts, all of the workplace dynamics, all of the power dynamics, and all of the implications of those power dynamics. Does someone have to get reassigned, moved around, demoted? What are the potential implications of that for the Celtics organization legally? These are enormously complicated issues, and but my broader takeaway was Brad Stevens looks distraught, and the longer this goes the harder it is to imagine Ime Odoka walking back in and coaching the team. It's, it's still possible. They made it clear it's still possible. It just seems far-fetched to me. Yeah, and, you know, watching the press conference, I actually took notes, and there were two things that I'd like to reiterate that we all heard. One, that the Celtics brought in an independent law firm to conduct the investigation. And I know that there's a lot of chatter online about, oh, this was a consensual relationship between two you know, adults, whatever the case is, because the internet and social media takes a life of its own. But when the workplace is involved with relationships, there's protocols, there's rules, there's standards that elevated this beyond HR to having an independent external law firm come in and make these determinations. And this also shows that, you know, this was based on facts and findings, findings that we may not be privy to or should have to be privy to. And that's the first thing that stood out. The second thing is that no one else is facing penalty mm. other than Ime Udoka. 
And I feel like this is important because people keep saying we need to hear the woman's perspective, we need to find out who this person is, and hear that side as well if we're hearing Ime's side. At the end of the day, the investigation heard all perspectives necessary to come to this determination, and no one besides Udoka received a penalty. And to me, that speaks volumes. Mm. I, and I think it speaks to a, a different time in professional sports where, you know, I know people might say there have been these situations in the past, they didn't come to light. I, I think, and, and Wick Grosbeck said it, the Celtics are a corporation and a business, and that perhaps five years ago, three years ago, seven years ago, however, it might have been treated differently by an organization because <clears throat> a successful head coach, it is, no one's irreplaceable, but certainly uh, they, as a basketball coach, Ime Adoka, as a leader, they believed, and for good reason, that they had had, and they had an individual that would be for a very long time leading this organization. An organization maybe in the past would have found a way for this to have not escalated to an, uh, an internal, uh, uh, bringing a law firm to do an investigation, and then to meet out this kind of punishment. And so I think that's what's I think that's what's different about this, and it speaks to it is the year 2022. Correct. Not only that, but you said escalated. And I think it's important to note, we don't know how or when and why it escalated. And that, that there's, a, there's a gap of information, both of time and information missing there, that I think would reveal a lot about this story. We just don't know what sort of triggered these, this from going something that was going on mm. to something that was now being investigated. That is a very important puzzle piece of what happened here. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.